What's the relationship between these three solids when they're inscribed? The sphere, the closed cylinder, and the cube. This is a classic and remarkable relationship. That's right, I said they're inscribed. And since this is hands-on maths, I have the nets for you to download from my website and also a worksheet which creates a record of what you've learnt. These are PDFs, free to download. When we put the model together, it looks like this. Sphere, and then the cylinder, which is a closed cylinder, and then the cube. And we take the sphere and put it inside the cylinder, and then the cylinder inscribes inside the cube. And there it is, our model of the three inscribed solids. To return to our problem, we're going to make the radius of the sphere one, and then we're going to compare the volumes and surface areas. If the radius of the sphere is one, then the radius of the cylinder will be one, its height will be two, and the edge or the side of the cube will also be two. And we'll come back to the cube later because I want to concentrate on the sphere and the cylinder. Now we know that the volume of a cylinder is four over three pi r cubed. If r is one, then that's four over three pi. The surface area is four pi r squared. And if r is one, then that's four pi. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. If r equals one and h equals two, that's two pi. For the surface area, it's two pi r h plus two pi r squared to account for the top and the bottom of this closed cylinder. And if r equals one and h equals two, then that's six pi. Now we come to the interesting part. We're going to compare the volumes. And we'll put the smaller volume on the top of a fraction and the larger volume on the bottom. So in the numerator, we have four over three pi and the denominator is two pi. And after that, we'll do some algebra, straightforward. And the answer is two over three. Now we're going to compare the surface areas. Well, that will be simply 4 pi over 6 pi, which is also 2 over 3. And that's the remarkable thing. It's the same fraction. This was discovered by none other than Archimedes. Now, Archimedes was from Syracuse. And here is an ancient Greek temple on the island of Sicily. Now, the armies of the Roman general Marcellus eventually overcame the defences of Syracuse, which Archimedes had been using his ingenuity to improve. This Roman mosaic depicts a Roman centurion giving Archimedes an order to which he responds do not disturb my circles. Now this soldier, they said, killed Archimedes, which was against the orders of Marcellus, which were that Archimedes was not to be harmed. The Greek historian Plutarch said of Archimedes, although he made many excellent discoveries, 
He is said to have asked his kinsmen and friends to place over the grave where he should be buried a cylinder enclosing a sphere with an inscription giving the proportion by which the containing solid exceeds the contained. Now this is a painting from 1797 by Benjamin West called Cicero Discovering the Tomb of Archimedes. Marcus Tullius Cicero was a Roman senator, a consul, and most notably a great orator and writer. In Book 5 of his Tusculan Disputations, Cicero says that when he was in Sicily, he went looking for and found the tomb of Archimedes. He recognised it by the carving of the sphere and the cylinder. And in that book he concludes, and I quote, Thus the greatest city of Greece, and once the most learned as well, would have been ignorant of the tomb of its most ingenious citizen, had a man from Arpenium not come and pointed it out. End quote. Cicero was from Arpenium. This quote shows how Roman orators like to exaggerate. And in this case, Cicero may even have invented the fact that he found the tomb, because no one else has ever found it. He was arguing how societies should remember the men of great learning and not forget them. He also praises himself in this passage. Cicero was a defender of the Republic, and that made him a political opponent of his contemporary Julius Caesar. Like Caesar, Cicero was brutally murdered, and within two years of Caesar's death, but it was at the hands of the soldiers of Mark Antony, who was his enemy. Back to our problem, and we'll now look at the cylinder inscribed in the cube. The cylinder will have a radius of one and a height of two, and the cube will have a side length of two. The formula for the volume of a cube is S cubed. If the side is two, then the volume is eight cubic units. The surface area is six times side squared. The side is two, that will be 24 square units. And now we can recall the cylinder, which we've already covered, and compare the volumes. So we have two pi over eight, which equals pi over four. And now we compare the surface areas. Six pi over 24, which is also pi over four. Again, we have the same fraction. So the situation so far is that for both volume and surface area, the sphere to the cylinder is a fraction of two thirds, and the cylinder to the cube is a fraction of pi over four. So that makes us wonder what's the sphere to the cube well, it should just be a matter of multiplying those two fractions, which will give us pi over 6. But let's check. We have a fraction then of 4 over 3 pi over 8. And after some algebra, it's pi over 6. Let's look at the surface areas. We have four pi over 24, which is of course, pi over six. So it checks out. So the final relationship is this. All that remains is to do the proofs. Now these are pretty straightforward because 
The radius of the sphere will be r, so the radius of the cylinder will be r, its height will be 2r, and the side of the cube will be also 2r. So let's firstly compare the sphere and the cylinder, and by some straightforward algebra, it's 2 over 3. Now the surface area of the sphere and the cylinder, after some algebra, it's also 2 over 3. A sphere has exactly two-thirds the volume and two-thirds the surface area of the closed cylinder in which it is inscribed. Now let's do the proof for the cylinder and the cube, and it's pi over 4. And the surface area of the cylinder and the cube? Pi over 4. A closed cylinder has exactly pi over 4 the volume and pi over 4 the surface area of the cube in which it is inscribed. Now the sphere and the cube? It's pi over 6. And the surface area? pi over 6. The sphere has exactly pi over 6 the volume and pi over 6 the surface area of the cube in which it is inscribed. To conclude, I hope you found this relationship interesting. Strictly speaking, we should have done the proofs first. But I prefer a step-by-step -step method. From the hands-on paper model, to a calculation using 1 as the radius of the sphere, to finally doing the proofs, all summed up on a worksheet. This is an example of hands-on maths. If you'd like more, please subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in the next one.